have a blessed, blessed Resurrection Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. We will begin our worship experience this morning with a centering moment with a video entitled Out of the Grave. Mm. of that grave and we are grateful we are grateful for the sacrifice that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ paid on the cross for each of us that we might live again and have eternal life we are thankful to God to be able to worship him in spirit and in truth on this resurrection Sunday April 9th 2023 those who have gathered here in the sanctuary and those of us who are joining us online welcome into this place today let us all stand for the call to worship the ushers may allow the worshipers to come into the sanctuary as we prepare for our call to worship Amen. Our call to worship this day. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the, tomb, the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Amen. He has risen. Amen. He has risen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice on this Resurrection Sunday and be glad. And are you glad in it today Amen. that we serve a risen Savior? You may be seated for 
the invocation. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. You have paid it all for me. Death could not hold you down. You are the risen king, seated in majesty. You are the risen king. And on this day, Heavenly Father, we come with thankfulness, Lord, in our hearts. We come, oh Lord, to worship you in spirit and in truth. We come, oh Lord, to have an experience, an encounter with the risen King on this day. We have been with you, oh God, and you have been with us through this holy week. You journeyed, oh God, and we journeyed with you to the cross, to the crucifixion on Friday, that good Friday. We were with you, O oh God, in silence and meditation on Holy Saturday, God, as we remembered the miracles and the mysteries of you descending into hell and coming up victorious, O oh God, with the keys of death in your hands, that we might live again. And then on today, O oh God, we come before you rejoicing, O oh God, with gratitude in our hearts, O oh God, that we indeed serve a risen Savior, that death could hold you down, oh God. And we are grateful, oh Lord, this day to be able to worship a risen king, a live king, a loving king, oh God. So we ask, oh God, that you come and you fill these places, oh God, in our hearts, oh Lord, and in the sanctuaries, oh Lord, and in our homes, oh God, wherever we are experiencing you, oh God, this day, we know, oh Lord, that your presence is everywhere. And so we, God, gather as a community of faith just to worship you and give you glory and honor and praise, oh God, because you are the risen King. And we bless you, oh God, for everything that we will experience in you and through you and with you today, oh God. Let us lift our hearts in joyful sound as we say amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen, amen. Our hymn of praise. And adoration is that anybody happy to be in the house of the Lord today? Anybody glad that we are here to serve a risen Savior? Not one that's still in the tomb because he died, but one who rose that you might have the right to the tree of life. Let us stand and join in the singing of our hymn of praise and worship. Christ the Lord is risen today.
grateful again that we serve a risen Savior. Yes. And we are grateful that he shows up in our lives every yes. day. Yes. And that's the reason for us to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Yes. And in that vein, let us recite, or in our hearts, not just with our lips, but in our mm -hmm. hearts, that which we believe, the one who died to set us free, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born under the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from this you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence and the spirit of the Lord. This morning, we have a special video presentation, our children's moment, entitled The Easter Story, but I'm sure there's some adults in here mm -hmm. who will be enlightened by the sharing of this most precious story that's passed down for more than 2,000 years of the sacrifice that my Lord and your Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, paid for our sins so that we might have a right to the tree of life and that we might be redeemed by his precious blood to be in right relationship with God the Father. Let us see our Christmas, our sorry, our Christmas, our Easter story. This one, one of the After the Sabbath, and as the sun was just coming up to begin a new week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to visit the tomb where Jesus had been buried. All of a sudden, there was a severe earthquake. The earth shook because an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled back the stone that blocked the entrance of the tomb, and sat down on top of it. The angel's appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The men who stood guard at the tomb were so afraid to see an angel that they trembled and fainted. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus who was killed on a cross. He is not here. He has risen just like he said he would. Come and see where his body used to be. Then go quickly to Jesus' friends, the disciples, and tell them this. Jesus has risen from the dead and is going to the city of Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you all of this. So the two women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy to tell the disciples the good news. And suddenly, as they were running to tell the disciples, Jesus met them on the way. They came to him, bowed down to clasp his feet, and worshiped him. Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers, the disciples, to go to Galilee. There they will see me. People saw Jesus alive on that first Easter day. He is alive forevermore and loves each and every one of us. to tell the story you know you got to know the story to tell the story amen as we prepare for our scripture reading and prayer uh, dr. Hargrove will come with our scripture reading on today and I'm going to ask if Reverend polite if you could be prepared to lead us in prayer this morning from the prayer bench please amen so Reverend Monica will come at this time
Praise the Lord, everyone. Our scripture reading today is taken from John, the 20th chapter, and I'll be reading in your hearing verses 1 through 18 from the New Revised Standard Version, the updated edition. Hear ye the words of the Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first, also went in and saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not touch me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Amen. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them all that he said to her. This is the word of God for the people of God. We are blessed by hearing, receiving, and believing this mighty word, this Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Amen. Find it 
that a man would lay down his life for friend.
you loved us so much that you gave us your only begotten son, Father. And we come today just to celebrate the joy and the hope that your risen son left all of us with, Father God. We come to you this morning at Lomax AME Zion Church just to say we know that that was love. Now, Father, we ask in this morning prayer that you touch each and every one of us, that when we go to our Calvary, when we have to bear our cross, we can go there knowing that we have the victory just like your son Jesus Christ had, Father God. We going knowing that as believers, you planted in us the Holy Spirit that can remind us every day, Father God, of that love that the choir sang about, that love that that allows us to forgive our enemies. That love that allows us to know that with no pain, there won't be any gain. That love that reminds us of our assignment, Father God. That love that reminds us that we just have to commit our spirit unto you when we don't know what else to do, Father God. We thank you for that love. We thank you, Father God, that we can believe in you without seeing you because we walk by faith and not sight. Father God, we offer this big resurrection prayer this Sunday morning to give you glory and thanks for that love that your son sent to us, your son Jesus Christ, Father God. Father God, we're not going to stop there. We thank you for the joy that you sent us. We thank you that you called us as believers to be your messengers on this earth today. So, Father, I ask that you stir up a new thing in us since we're all starting a new beginning, that we can walk by faith and do what you called us to do, Father God. I ask that you just stir up those gifts so that we can go out there in the highways and byways and proclaim that Jesus has risen today. He risen more than 2,000 years ago. But I ask that you stir up in us, each one of us, if it's just a touch, if it's just a smile, if it's just reading the word, if it's just a bag of groceries, if it's a five or a ten, Father God, help us. Walk in that love that your son Jesus sent to us. Then, Father God, I ask that if some of us have scales on our eyes, that you peel them off so that we can see, feel, and touch that love, that genuine love that you left us with, Father God, the Holy Spirit, that help us to see you in times when we're going through, reminding us that Jesus rose to remind us that it's finished. No matter what we may be going through, it's finished because your word said so, Father God. So we thank you for your holy word, Father God. And I thank you, Father, that you also gave us each other, Father God. Mama, this your son. Father, this your daughter. All, no matter, no blood. But you gave us each other in the family of Christ and kingdom building. And we thank you, Father God. Now, Father God, if you stop by through one of us and our walking feet to go to the nursing home to touch somebody and say, that's love, the joy that I bring to you. If you go to the bereaved homes, Father, the Bullock family, the Ball family, let them be representation of those that are going through bereavement. Then, Father, those of us that are bereaved in our minds, we ask that you loose the shackles so that we can receive you and so that we can see you, Father God. And we ask this, Father, God that you bless the messenger this morning the shepherd of this flock let him bring a word that can turn over some tables Father God let him bring a word that on this resurrection Sunday that can bring somebody some joy bring somebody some hope let him bring a word that the blind can see by faith let him bring your anointing Father God to not only this house but to the airways and zoom land to the telephone connect let him know that that was love and we thank you on this resurrection sunday for the joy and the hope as you send each one of us out as your disciples to touch a life i offer this prayer for all of those in the pew father god touch them with a special anointing as we end our lent season but we don't end our relationship with your son jesus christ father god allow us to continue to give up what wouldn't right in the first place and let us walk in your victory father god i offer this prayer in jesus name amen amen and amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your resurrection power. I thank you for the change in each and every one of our lives every day. Mm -mm -mm. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
love your siblings, how much you love your nieces, your nephews, your boo. There is no greater love than the love that God showed to each of us on that day when he chose to go. Because he could have turned it around, but he chose to go to stay on that cross to die. As we move into our worship experience, oh God, this day, into our offering time, we come to God with a grateful heart and a cheerful heart, giving back to him just a portion of that which he has entrusted to us. Because we know that everything belongs to God. Amen. Our joy, our hope, our love, our treasures, it all belongs to God. And in that spirit of cheerfulness, we are ready to accept your tithes, your gifts, your offerings, that we might continue to be, the ushers may come forward, that we might continue to do the work that God has called us to do here in the kingdom. For those who are joining us online, you may give as well during this time. You see on your screens the ways that you may sow your tithes and offerings into the kingdom through our Givelify app. And you can also continue to mail and bring your tithes and offerings to the sanctuary. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this time and the opportunity, O oh Lord, to sow back into your kingdom, O oh God. We thank you, O oh Lord, for every gift, and we thank you, O oh God, for every giver. We ask, O oh God, that you would take our meager offerings, O oh God, and multiply them in the heavens, O oh Lord, that there would be enough for us to do the work that you called to do. Bless us, O oh God, that we might continue to bless others with our works and with our time, with our talent, and with our treasures. This we ask and pray in the precious name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Amen.
your glory fill this place all the glory all the glory all of the glory all the glory Your glory fill this place. All the glory, all the glory, oh God, oh God, all the glory, all the glory, oh God, oh God, all the glory. Resurrection Sunday morning, I would ask that you would join me in John's Gospel. We'll be in the 20th chapter, and I'm just going to read verses 1 through 10. The entire um, section that we're going to use was read for your hearing earlier, but I'm going to read verses 1 through 10. John chapter 20, and we'll be reading verses 1 through 10. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. 
he saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and said and saw and believed. For as yet they had not understood the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. Let us pray. God, every Resurrection Sunday, we're awed at your gift to us. So today is no different, God. We stand in awe of what you did for us. We stand in awe of what you went through for us. We stand in awe of your love for us. And so God, we pray now that your Holy Spirit would come in this moment and that you would give the people the word that you intend for them. We pray God that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable unto thee for Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. And it's in Jesus name I pray, amen. You may or may not be familiar with a person by the name of Stephen Hawking. If you're unfamiliar with who Stephen Hawking was, he was an English groundbreaking theoretical physicist, a scientific genius, if you will. He was a professor of mathematics at the University of Cambridge, which some say his post was the most prestigious academic post in the world. At the age of 21, Hawking was diagnosed with a motor neuron disease that gradually over decades paralyzed him. He ultimately lost his ability to speak as well as his ability to move. And so ultimately he had to speak using a computer generated speech machine. He passed away in 2018, but his mind was still brilliant even though his body had betrayed him. When asked about his belief in God, this was Hawking's response. I don't believe that there is proof of a higher power. I believe that the universe can explain itself through the laws of science. He went on to say, before we understood science, it was natural to believe in God, that God created the universe. But now science gives us a more convincing explanation and in terms of the afterlife, Hawking said, no one created the universe and no one directs our fate. This leads me to a profound realization, he said, there's probably no heaven nor afterlife. I think belief in the afterlife is just wishful thinking. Now to be fair to him, he didn't dismiss the views of others. He just said, you're free to believe what you wanna believe but what I believe is that there is no heaven, there is no hell, there is no God. God did not create the universe. Stephen Hawking was brilliant, but lost. Stephen Hawking's views are, are no different than many people around the world. They don't believe in God. They don't believe in the divinity of Jesus. They don't believe in the resurrection. They don't believe in life after death. In fact, on this Resurrection Sunday, 2023, there are some under the sound of my voice who aren't sure whether we actually believe or not. We can be as brilliant as Hawking was, and we still have some serious belief deficits when it comes to the account of the resurrection. Why? Because for many of us, we live by the adage that seeing is believing. Well, I know that that's what people say, that seeing is believing. But on this Resurrection Sunday, God sent me by to ask you a, a simple question related to that. Is seeing believing? is seeing believing in our text in john 20 it's early sunday morning and it's still dark outside verse 1 tells us that mary magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away the stone what stone in case you 
don't know the backstory and the events of the resurrection, let me remind you that Mary Magdalene found herself outside of the tomb looking at this stone that had been rolled away, according to John's account. This man named Jesus had been falsely accused and unjustly convicted, unfairly sentenced by the Jewish religious authority. And Jesus' execution had been brought out by the manner of being hung on a cross by the Romans. On that Good Friday, that first Good Friday, nearly 2,000 years ago, Jesus died for the sins of the whole world. And after his death, Joseph of Arimathea, a secret follower of Jesus, took possession of his body. In John's account, it says that Nicodemus, who came to Jesus by night, in other words, he was another secret follower, came and said that he had a tomb that Jesus could be put in. And, and so the two of them who were, who were secret followers of Jesus, we got any secret followers of Jesus in here? Nobody knows that we follow Jesus. We don't want anybody to know because it's not cool for other people to know that we follow Jesus by night. They came by night and they, they took his body and they wrapped it up in some spices and some linen cloths, which was the burial custom of the day. They placed Jesus' body in an unused tomb so that the burial process could be completed on Sunday morning because see what was going on was the Passover was happening and you couldn't complete a burial while the Passover was going on so Jesus's burial was interrupted by the Passover and so now Passover is over and it's early on Resurrection Sunday morning and Mary Magdalene finds herself at the tomb. And we know that she was there because the other accounts tell us that she came to complete the burial process. I'm sure that Mary had to be in disbelief when she came to the tomb and she saw what she saw. She had to be wondering who removed the stone? Why was the stone removed? I'm confident in saying that Mary was probably thinking, I really don't believe what I'm seeing. Today we've asked the question, is, is seeing believing? And for Mary, as she arrived at the open tomb, seeing was not believing. She, she was disbelieving what she was seeing with her very own eyes. It's here that we, we find our first point for today. As we tackle the question, is seeing believing? I want to leave with you that sometimes seeing is disbelieving. Sometimes seeing is disbelieving. Well, well we know the, the, the statement is that seeing is believing, but how sometimes is, is seeing disbelieving? There are times in our lives when God does some miraculous things in our lives. The miracle is right in our face. We see the miracle, but we don't believe that it was God who was responsible for the miracle. We look for all kinds of other explanations and justifications for the miracles that God is doing in our lives. We can be as brilliant as Stephen Hawking's. We can see a miracle of the, the universe all around us who, who could look and see the stars, but he couldn't see God. He can see the beauty of the universe, but he couldn't see God's handiwork there. We can see God's work at, in our lives, but we don't always believe that it's God who's doing the moving in our lives. We say it's fate or it's coincidence. It just happened. But thanks be to God, some of us recognize that it is God. We can see God's handiwork in our bodies, but, but we don't sometimes believe that it's God at work in our bodies. It's the medicine and it's the medical team and it's not God. But some of us with good sense know that when we are healed, it's nothing but the hand of God that's moving in our lives. We can see God's hand at work on the job or in our finances, but there are those who say that I worked hard for this. I invested well here, and this has nothing to do with God. But how many of you know that everything that we have comes from God? And so we have to recognize that it is God. And so for Mary, even though she was seeing a major miracle right in front of her eyes, the stone having been removed from the entrance of the tomb, seeing wasn't believing for her. She wasn't believing what she was seeing in her state of disbelief. Mary takes off running to go find Simon Peter and the disciple whom Jesus loved. And she said they have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. I'm not sure 
how Mary knew that Jesus' body was not in the tomb. Because when you get home, go look at it. It doesn't say she even looked into the tomb. The tomb was open. She was in disbelief, and she took off running to find her fellow disciples. The door of the tomb was open because death had been defeated. The door of the tomb was open because Jesus had just busted out of the tomb with all power in his hands. But Mary wasn't seeing a tomb where a miracle had happened. Mary wasn't seeing a tomb where death had been defeated. Mary was disbelieving what was before her very eyes. Perhaps you think I'm being too hard on Mary. Mary, the one who saw the miracle but didn't recognize it. But here's the thing. If Mary's going to be accounted as part of Jesus' disciples, then she's going to be held accountable for everything that he told his disciples. Go with me to John 14. In John 14, Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe God, believe in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself. Jesus had told them that he was going to prepare a place for them. But Mary Magdalene shows up at the tomb. The door is wide open. The body is not there. And somehow she's still disbelieving Jesus' own words. He said he was going to go and prepare a place for them. Well, Mary is not much different than many of us. The, the miracles are all around us. The evidence is all around us. And yet and still often we have disbelief about whether Jesus really is who we say that he is. This Resurrection Sunday, if you've seen the evidence of what Jesus is doing in your life, if you've seen the miracles that you know it could only be God through Jesus Christ in your life, don't be like Mary, don't be like Peter, don't be like the beloved disciple, don't run around with your head cut off like a chicken, but know that it is God moving in your life and affirming in your spirit on this Resurrection Sunday that whether you believe it or not, God is moving in your life. I want to tell you that if you're sitting right here today, God is doing some miraculous things in your life because it could have been another way. You know your story and you know your testimony. God has moved in your life. But do you believe that it's God who's been moving in your life? As our text continues in verse 3, Peter and the beloved disciple take off running for the tomb. I want to suggest to you that they're both running because they don't believe what Mary had to say. Mary came to them and said the tomb is open and the body is missing and they did not believe what Mary had to say. I love the image of these two disciples racing each other to try to get to the tomb. Verse five says that when they got there, one of them bent down and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. I guess Simon Peter was a slow runner because he got beat there by the beloved disciple. And when he arrived at the tomb, he went inside and noticed that the linen wrappings were there. He saw that the cloth had covered Jesus' head was there. It was folded up and lying apart from the wrappings. And verse 8 records that the disciple who had gotten to the tomb first went in and he saw and he believed. Well, I want to leave you with the second point today. And I know you're going to think I'm a little crazy, but that's all right because God gave it to me. Is seeing believing, sometimes believing isn't believing. Sometimes believing isn't believing. What do you mean by that? There's so much detail in these verses of scripture that John provides us. And as I said, I believe that a fair interpretation is that these disciples took off running because they didn't believe what Mary had to say. Some biblical scholars believe that all this detail that they have in there about who got there first and who looked in first and what was folded where and what was sitting there was to make sure that we could believe that it was not a robber who came into the grave and took the body. They want us to understand that there was grave robbing going on at that time. But would a grave robber come in, take the body, remove the burial clothes, and the cloth off the face, and fold it up and put it on the table only if they had OCD? Most robbers don't have time to do all that. They
they would have taken the body just as it was. And so the writer of John wanted us to understand something miraculous is going on if you want to disbelieve that, that Jesus really did get up from the tomb. But the other thing that the writer wants us to understand is this. A few chapters earlier, a couple of Sundays ago, we looked at the raising of Lazarus. And we said it was a preview of coming attractions, right? We said that on this day, we would celebrate that Jesus was actually raised from the dead. Yeah. But what the writer wants us to see is that when Lazarus was raised from the dead, when he came out of the tomb, he was wearing his grave clothes. He had them on him. But the writer wants us to understand that there was a difference between when Lazarus was raised and when Jesus was raised. Lazarus came out with his burial clothes, but Jesus left his behind. That was symbolic of the fact that he left death behind. His resurrection was like none other, and so he left his burial clothes behind him. Well, I stopped by to tell you today, some of us don't have enough belief to believe that because Jesus was raised, we too can leave our burial clothes behind. Some of us are still walking around with our death clothes on us, and God is trying to raise us up and do some new things in our life. We're not walking around like we are now free in Jesus, that our clothes have been taken off of us, and in every situation, we can come out of our tombs and we can be raised to new life. I know that it doesn't look like your home is right, but walk around like you're free of that dead situation. I know it doesn't look like your job is right, but walk around like you're free of that dead situation. I know that your spouse ain't acting right, but walk around like you will be delivered from that situation. That's why he got up out of the tomb, so that you didn't have to walk around all the time like you still have your grave clothes on. That's what Resurrection Sunday is all about. We can be free and free indeed. But we find ourselves that after Jesus came out and he left his grave clothes behind him, verse 9 says that Jesus' disciples hadn't understood the scriptures as to his rising. It said that the disciple whom Jesus loved went in there and then he saw and believed. Mm. Remember I said believing is not always believing? Mm. The scriptures said that they didn't understand the resurrection. So what did he believe? How did he go in there and say I will see and I believe, but the scriptures say they still didn't understand the resurrection. Because I want to suggest to you that when he went into the tomb and he saw what he believed was Mary's report. All he believed was that there was no body in the grave. He didn't yet understand the fullness of the resurrection. I stopped by to tell somebody today, I know you've been to Sunday school all your life. I know you know all the right things to say. But do you really believe in your heart when it gets funny in your life and difficult in your life, do you really believe that Jesus will get you out of any situation? I don't know about you, but that's how crazy I am. When I get myself in some crazy messes in my life, I always have a peace about me because I believe that God loves me enough to get me out of my situations. Do you fully believe? And here's what I know. Look at verse 10 of the text. If you believe in Jesus Christ, would you just go home after experience the resurrection? That's what it says in verse 10. They saw the empty tomb. If you believed in the resurrection, would you just go home and eat a ham sandwich? Would you just go home and put your feet up and watch TV? If you experienced the resurrection, you've got to tell somebody about it. But they just went home. I'm here to tell you that believing is not always believing. And how do I know? Because some of us say we believe, but we don't tell anybody about it. We just go about our way, but we really don't believe. That's what the scriptures say to us. Sometimes believing is not always believing. Well, as I hasten to the, to the end of the text today, John's account ends right where it began with Mary Magdalene. We find Mary still in the garden graveyard weeping outside the tomb. A miracle has taken place, but Mary is weeping outside of the tomb. 
Verse 11 says she bent over and she looked into the tomb. And Mary saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. These angels said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Mary replies, they have taken away my Lord, and I don't know what they have, where they have laid him. Isn't this the same condition that we found Mary in at the beginning of John 20? She's saying the same thing that she said in verse number one. So I know that I know that at this point, Mary does not understand that Jesus has been raised from the dead. Verse 14, Mary sees Jesus, but she doesn't recognize that it's Jesus. She sees him standing there, but she doesn't know it's Jesus. It's in this verse that, that prompted this sermonic question today is seeing, believing. For Mary is seeing Jesus, but she does not know who Jesus is. How many times in our life do we see Jesus, but we don't recognize that it is Jesus moving in our lives? Is seeing really believing? Jesus said to Mary, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Verse 15 says that Mary assumed that Jesus was the gardener. He was the groundskeeper uh, who worked in the cemetery. And so Mary says to Jesus, sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will go and take him away. This question of the groundskeeper, for whom are you looking, is one of the most important biblical and theological questions that all of us must answer. For whom are you looking? On this Resurrection Sunday, let me make it clear that each of us, even the Stephen Hawkings of the world, are looking for Jesus, whether we know it or not. Hawking was looking for Jesus in science. He was looking for Jesus in math. He was looking for Jesus in the universe. Some of us look for Jesus in the degrees that we earn. Some of us look for Jesus in our career path. Some of us look for Jesus in the relationships that aren't going right. Well, in our lives, until we find Jesus, I'm talking about the real Jesus, then nothing is gonna go right in our lives. This Resurrection Sunday, if you've been looking for Jesus in all the wrong places, I stop by to tell you that Jesus has been looking for you. You see, my Bible tells me that he's looking for that one sheep that got lost. My Bible tells me that he's looking for that one pearl that's in the midst of the sea. My Bible tells me that he's looking for a lost coin like you look for a quarter underneath your car when you're going through the drive through at McDonald's and you're a little bit short. That's how hard he's looking for you. My Bible tells me that even if you're out there in the world and you're living your best life and you're doing stuff that you shouldn't do just like the prodigal son Jesus is standing there looking for you with open arms saying come on home I don't care what the church folk have to say I don't care what your family has to say come on home because I am looking for you I died for you I hung on a cross for you and I got up so that you might have life and so, our text says that Jesus said to Mary, Mary? And she turned and said to him, Rabboni, which means teacher, it's here that we find our final point. Sometimes believing is not seeing. Sometimes believing is not seeing. In Mary's case, it was not seeing. That Jesus, seeing Jesus, that caused her belief it was hearing her name called that began the process of her coming to believe that Jesus had been raised from the dead. Like Stephen Hawking, some of us need to see in order to believe in God. But the Christian faith is built on a faith in Jesus, not about seeing Jesus, but about believing what the word says and what Jesus says. For followers of Christ, seeing is not believing. Believing is about not seeing and still believing that it's gonna happen. Yeah. Believing is not seeing that job that Jesus promised you and still believing that it's gonna to come to pass. Yeah. Believing is not seeing that relationship that you've been desiring and Jesus promised it to you and it's not there yet, but you believe it's gonna to come to pass. Believing is not seeing that degree that you don't think you can complete, but Jesus has said that it is finished and it's 
still believing in it. Believing is not seeing that healing that the doctor said are not possible, but Jesus gave you a different report, and so you still believe it. Believing is not seeing that Jesus got up from a cross. You didn't see it. I didn't see it. I wasn't there to see it. But what I know is that my Savior got up from the cross on that day. Mary Magdalene, she never saw the physical form of Jesus. Do you hear what I'm saying? She saw the spiritual form of Jesus. And so it wasn't her seeing with her physical eyes. You've got to look for Jesus with your spiritual eyes. And if you don't look for him with spiritual eyes, you will never see him. Well, as I take my seat, we started with Stephen Hawking and his disbelief. Let me end right there. So let me tell you this. Stephen Hawking believed in science. And there's something in science that's known as an atom. I'm going to take you back to your early science classes. The thing that I didn't remember about an atom is the fact that you cannot see an atom. No one has ever seen an atom. There's no microscope that's powerful enough for you to see an atom. But people believe that atoms existed because atoms are the thing that are the basic building block that start everything that is matter. And so the electrons, the protons, proton and the neutrons all make up the atom, but we've never seen the atom. How is it that Stephen Hawking could believe in an atom that he's never seen, but he couldn't believe in a savior that we can see moving all around us? stop by to tell somebody that if you can believe in anything that's scientific, that anything that's man-made, I'm here to tell you, you ought to have the faith to be able to believe that a man named Jesus came from darkness to heaven. He came down and put on flesh. He walked among us. He taught. He loved. And then he decided that he was going to go on a cross for you and for me. He stayed there because of his love. He went down and fought with death at the grave. And on the third day, he got up. I don't know about you, but I'd rather believe in Jesus than believe in an Adam. This Resurrection Sunday is seeing believing, sometimes seeing with your own two eyes is disbelief for us. Sometimes believing is actually not believing because we don't actually believe what we say we believe when times get hard. And ultimately, believing is about us being able to not see with our physical eyes, but being able to see with our spiritual eyes. So today I came to ask somebody the question, do you believe? That's what it boils down to because if you dressed up all nice and pretty today, put on your little fancy hat and your new dress, if you made little dinner reservations or you cooked your ham and your potato salad and it's all waiting at the house and you did all that stuff, but you don't believe that Jesus was raised from the dead, today ain't Resurrection Sunday for you. So I came out and asked you today. You see, believing for you, are you just acting like you believe. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Would you bow your heads with me? Let me put it in another gear for you in this invitation. I, I know how and what my calling is. And the Lord uses me sometimes to come with a harsh and rough word. I know it. But I'm here to tell anyone here under the sound of my voice that the other side of God is his loving side. He loves you so much, just like you are. Sometimes people want to come to the Lord after they've been cleaned up. But he wants you to come with all your scales, all your issues. He don't want the fish cleaned up. He just wants you to come as you are with a heart that says, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you love me enough to die for me and that 
You defeated death in the grave and that you got up on the third day. If you've never confessed that, why don't you make Resurrection Sunday the day that you give your life to Christ? Don't worry about who's looking because everybody ought to have their eyes closed right now. If you are in the midst of the congregation right now and you've never made this profession of faith, won't you just raise your hand right where you are so that I can see it and God can see it. If you know you've never accepted Jesus Christ, now is the season and the time. Would you just raise your hand? Nobody's looking. Everybody's head is down. Is there one today? And if not, if sometimes your faith gets a little shaky, you have moments of doubt and disbelief, we pray, God, that sometimes you would take the cobwebs off of our spiritual eyes so that we can see you moving in our life and know that you've not forsaken us, so that we can see the miracles that you're doing in our life and give you praise, honor, and glory for what you're doing in our life. And if you're here and you're not a part of a church home, you're not a part of the body of Christ, and you'd like to connect with us here at Lomax and be a part of this body of Christ. The doors of the church are open just like the tomb was open. All you have to do is come forward and say that you want to unite with us here at Lomax and we'll begin that process with you. This is our prayer, Lord. We pray, God, that if there be anyone who needs to respond, you will give them the unction to come forward. It's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. As the musician continues to play softly, is there one today who wants to come for salvation? Is there one who wants to just come to the altar and pray on today? Is there one who wants to unite with us here at Lomax? The altar is open for anyone who wants to come. The altar is open. benediction on today. If you are not a regular worshiper at Lomax, we would
would love it if you would just stand so that we could just see who you are and celebrate the gift of you having worship with us on today. Amen. We're not going to ask Amen. you to say anything. Amen. Just stand up so that we can see who you are. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It's so wonderful to have you with us, and we hope that you will continue to worship with us when you are able. Amen. 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 I think that's everything. So we will receive our benediction. We will ask you to then stand for the doxology and remain standing for the extinguishing of the candles. Is seeing believing. And now unto him who was able to keep us from falling, unto him who was able to present us before the presence of his throne with exceedingly great joy, to the all-wise God be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore, and let the people of God say, Amen. 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 on his accomplishment of being initiated into Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Amen. Amen.